Hurricane Barrel has officially become a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane in the Caribbean Sea, where it has produced already a ton of damage to areas like the Lesser Antilles, and it is expected to continue as a strong hurricane as it moves to the west towards areas like Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula, and there's now thinking that this could impact parts of the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to talk about exactly what you can expect with this storm, where it's exactly going to be going, and if this will actually end up impacting the United States. Now, I just want to start off by saying this is an extremely historic hurricane. It is breaking tons of records. This is the earliest Category 5 hurricane that we've had ever since July 17th of 2005. This is 16 days earlier than our earliest Category 5 on record, which is just unbelievable. And by the way, that was Hurricane Emily in 2005. But with all that said, this has broken almost a dozen records, and it is continuing to be a very intense hurricane. It is a Category 5 as of earlier this morning, and it is continuing to move to the west and right now it's on track to impact areas like Jamaica within the next 48 hours. Southern Haiti and the Southern Dominican Republic will also eventually see impacts and then after that it's expected to go towards areas like the Yucatan Peninsula and then from there there are a lot of question marks that we're going to be breaking down for you in this video. One of which is that this could end up going towards Mexico. It also could go towards Texas. This even could take a boomerang turn towards Louisiana and it's all going to have to do with this ridge that's going to be in place later this week back over near Florida and that is going to basically decide where this hurricane goes. Let's hope this weakens a lot before then, but as of right now, it does not look like this is going to be weakening that much as it approaches the United States. Here's another view on the infrared imagery of Hurricane Barrel, and again, this is just mind-blowing. It is unbelievable what we're seeing with Hurricane Barrel. Notice all the convection around this. It is an extremely organized Category 5 hurricane as of earlier this morning. Maximum sustained winds did reach 165 miles per hour at the time I'm recording this forecast. Still a very defined eye. There's really no signs of weakening. And we, the thinking was that this was expected to weaken gradually throughout the day today and tomorrow. But at this point, it does not really look like it's going to weaken by much. It should weaken at least some by the end of today. But it's unbelievable how organized and how intense this hurricane is for the very beginning of July. It's just unbelievable what we're seeing out there in the Caribbean Sea. Now, this is the latest National Hurricane Center update on Hurricane Barrel in terms of its intensity, in addition to that, where it's expected to go with the cone of uncertainty. So as of right now, it is still a major hurricane back over in the Eastern Caribbean Sea. It will be making some tropical storm impacts to areas like Southern Haiti and Southern Dominican Republic. Predominantly, it's going to be a storm surge issue for those areas, so definitely be prepared for that if you're in either Haiti or the Dominican Republic. There will be tropical storm force winds in the immediate coastline and maybe even for some areas that are inland and the outer bands could also bring some heavy rainfall. Really, the more concerning thing over the next 48 hours is going to be Jamaica, because as of right now, it is likely that this hurricane is going to be extremely close to Jamaica, and we could see this make landfall in Jamaica as well, which means that we could see as many as four landfalls out of Hurricane Barrel, which would be just unbelievable at this point. So that's a possibility, uh, but overall, it's still a possibility that it stays a bit further down to the south and hugs the southern line of the Cone of Uncertainty. Now, from there, things become very uncertain. Overall, it is expected to weaken into a Category 2 hurricane on the southern side of Jamaica or near Jamaica by Wednesday evening, and then eventually weaken down into a Category 1 hurricane as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula. It could also still be flirting as a Category 2. By the time it crosses the Yucatan, it's expected to go into the Gulf of Mexico, where a lot of things could change. Now, this cone of uncertainty is from the advisory very early this morning. There may already be some changes by the time you're seeing this forecast, but one thing I do think is possible is that this could take a boomerang turn towards Louisiana. That's not impossible at this point. There are many computer models or computer models right now that are showing that possibility. And there's also a lot of computer models that are showing this right towards Mexico. There's also some that bring it in between those two solutions. So in this next segment, I'm going to go over what I think will happen with Hurricane Barrel. So beginning with the spaghetti models on various computer models over the next several days, notice for the next 72 hours, things are still relatively consistent and within reason. There are very minimal computer models that bring this into Jamaica directly, but many of them bring it very close and close enough to the point where the eye wall would impact areas like southern Jamaica. That is a really big concern as of right now. Now, beyond that, things become a little bit more uncertain as it approaches the Yucatan. Almost every computer model does have this making landfall to some extent over the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, with that said, I've seen a few computer models that have actually brought it outside of the Yucatan Peninsula and actually just directly into the Gulf. Now, those are not included on this chart, but 
something to keep in mind for later. Now, eventually, as this moves into the Gulf, there are a few different things that could happen, one of which would be this going directly to the west towards Mexico, pending that this ridge is just a weak ridge with a very weak kind of westerly and northwesterly turning radius, and that would be a better situation overall because this would be a much weaker tropical storm or hurricane by that point. If it stays in the Gulf for a long time, this could rapidly intensify again, which is why that would be technically a better situation than what we might see. Now, another scenario is that this does turn just a little bit more off to the north and northwest towards areas like Texas, and in this case, we could see some intensification, but it would probably get to maybe a Category 1, Category 2, possibly a low-end Category 3 if something like that happened. It would just depend on exactly where it goes and how much shear there is in the Gulf to try to weaken this thing out. Another scenario, which would basically be worst-case scenario, would be if this just took a turn off into areas like Louisiana, because this high-pressure system would have such a strong pull to the point where this would be a much slower-moving hurricane for at least a little bit of time over the Gulf of Mexico, meaning that there would be more time available for it to intensify and perhaps even rapidly intensify, which means it could go from like a Category 1 or a Tropical Storm all the way up to like a Category 3, maybe even higher hurricane. So that's something that we need to watch for very closely over the next several days is what these trends are showing us. Now, here's some of the ensembles on the GEFS on the most recent run. And just notice there is a large spread still across the board anywhere past the Yucatan and even up to the Yucatan, there's still a relatively large spread. A lot of computer models, though, are bringing it anywhere from about the Texas and Louisiana border all the way back over here to Mexico. So there's still a pretty large cone here overall, and we could still see this make landfall down here, too. That's also a possibility. Another ensemble, which is the GEPS ensembles, this gives you another idea that there is still a lot of uncertainty. It shows a lot more of a wide variety of solutions. It actually goes anywhere from Florida all the way back over here to Mexico, which I don't think this is going towards Florida, by the way. But that is one thing that could happen, at least according to this one model that brings it that direction. It's just an outlier. We don't usually count those because it's just so far off track. Uh, but overall, again, a lot of them bring it between Texas and as well as Louisiana. Some still bring it, though, to Mexico. So what do I think will happen? Well, I'm going to talk more about it in a second, but I just want to kind of give you a statistical probability of where I think it'll make landfall. I would say overall, it's about a 55% chance that it makes landfall somewhere in Mexico on its last landfall. So south of Texas. Overall, I think that there's at least about a 40% chance that this makes landfall somewhere over in Texas, maybe 35% if we want to even go down that far. Anywhere further to the east, mainly just Louisiana, it's about a 5 to 10% chance, I think, right now that it makes landfall there. It's going to depend, though, a lot on what this high pressure system does and how strong it is. The stronger it is, the more pull it's, these, this hurricane is going to get, and that would be, again, worst case scenario. The weaker it is, and also the further to the west it is, the better shot that this is just going to go back into Mexico and not impact the United States very much. Now, this is the intensity guide with a bunch of different computer models over the next seven days. And notice right off the bat, this is the latest run, and it actually does not show it as a Category 5, even though at least at this particular run it wasn't, but now it is. That's just something to keep in mind, at least at the time I'm recording this forecast. It is still a Category 5. Now, as we go throughout the next, you know, 48 hours, it is going to gradually decrease. So by the time it gets to Jamaica, it is expected to be somewhere between a Category 2 and a Category 4. I would lean for this to be closer to at least a strong Category 3 by the time it gets to Jamaica, and then after it gets through Jamaica, I think it'll start to weaken more down to probably a Category 2, as long as nothing crazy changes over the next 24 hours. Then by the time we get closer to the time that actually crosses over the Yucatan, it'll be a tropical storm or a low-end Category 1 hurricane. A few outliers keep it higher, and that's more contingent on it missing the Yucatan, which again is a pretty low chance at this point. And then after that, it is likely to increase if it does go into the Gulf for an extended amount of time. And so how much will it increase in terms of intensity? Well, that's something that we don't really know, but in this next segment, I'm going to show you multiple different computer models and multiple different scenarios that could happen depending on where this does go. Now, we're going to go over three different computer models. We're going to begin with the ICON model, and we're then eventually going to go to the European model and the GFS model. Beginning with the ICON model, over the next few days, it is actually showing a landfall in Jamaica. So this is one of those outliers. Not many computer models bring this right into Jamaica. The ICON model is one of them. Once we go into Thursday, and as well as into early Friday, this eventually gets closer to the Yucatan, and again, it still shows it kind of missing the Yucatan, if not a very brief landfall near Cancun, is what it shows going into Friday morning. Eventually, 
eventually as we go into Saturday into Sunday, notice it turns to the north and northwest towards areas like Louisiana and even, even closer to Texas as well. This is what it shows as we get a little bit closer to late Saturday into Sunday. Notice how it just kind of sits there in the northwest Gulf and eventually would make landfall in Louisiana. So again, this is one potential thing that could happen. It's a scenario and it's by no means a guarantee, but this is something that could happen depending on the intensity of that ridge. That's going to matter a lot over the next few days. The European model also does show a similar landfall in Jamaica as we go into Wednesday afternoon. Um, this is also something to watch for. It could make landfall in Jamaica. Either way, this one does show it a bit weaker over Jamaica. Then eventually as it goes towards the Yucatan, it shows it much weaker in terms of a hurricane. And then eventually as it goes over the Yucatan, the European model brings it into the Southwest Gulf. And eventually by Sunday morning, even in, throughout Sunday, it barely moves there in the Southwest Gulf. And then eventually slowly drifts there into Mexico. Now, if this does happen, that would be a better case scenario, at least for the United States, because we wouldn't really see that many impacts. It would be worse for Mexico because we'd be dealing with a lot of flooding rains, but there wouldn't be a whole lot of intensification when it comes to, for example, the higher wind speeds, which would usually come from a hurricane. Now, the GFS model is the last model I'll show you. Again, it shows it going to the Southwest Gulf as actually a relatively weak tropical storm as we go into Saturday into Sunday, and then kind of drags it up to Texas by Monday into Tuesday, where it kind of just sits up there. This could end up being another flooding event if something like that happened for Texas, but again, there are a lot of scenarios right now, and we're just so far out, we don't know which one's going to actually pan out. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll continue to post updates as we get closer and as Hurricane Barrel continues to barrel across the Caribbean Sea.